G'day folks. Um, look, this is just a short video, and I will make it short, um, to look at the operation of a 40 amp Renergy DC to DC charger, because I've just changed caravans, and um, I'm starting afresh. This caravan I've bought here has a single 100 amp lead acid battery and a mains charger. That's it. It does not operate as an off-grid um, band at the moment. It's all based on 12 volts internally. Everything's designed to run off 12 volts, but it's it's a 2015 model and so basic, it's it's you know crazy. But that's what I wanted, because that means I can do what I like with it. So I'm gonna put a lithium uh, system in it. And so I went looking for a charger and what I was going to buy before I bought this DCC50S for the previous system, I did this, this other video on it, if you have a look at that one. I've had stacks of comments about how I did everything wrong, etc. Um, I should do this, I should have done that. This is, I think this is just fairly basic stuff. The DC to DC charger's job um, is twofold. Provide a, the correct charging profile for the type of battery you've got installed. And the second thing it's supposed to do is to operate from a reduced voltage coming from the vehicle due to cable loss and because of that they they quote an operating range for it this is where the dcc 50 failed in in as far as i'm concerned that was my point of my video the point of my video was it does not operate over the voltage input range that they state it does this one does, and let's have a look at it. But I was gonna buy this one originally, but this didn't have a lithium profile in it. But I've, when I went to buy this time, I was looking at various options and this is great value for money. And it now has lithium profile. So let's have a look at it. Okay, so here it is. The Renergy 40 amp DC to DC charger. Um, and my current clamp just turned itself off. I'll just quickly get that back going again. Right. So, uh, 40 amps output at max. Um, so you've got to be able to put better than 40 amps into it, uh, of course. So I've got this currently throttled back to run at 50% at 20 amps. And that's achieved through, um, you put a tie wire between the positive terminal and there's two connections over here. There's a, what's called a D plus and an LC. LC is uh, limiting the current and D plus is an ignition sense, if you like. That has to be fed from something, from a 12 volt source. So I've just tied it here for the purpose of the exercise. That just tells this thing to start. No solar input on this. It's purely a DC to DC charger only. Uh, I'm going to run separate solar, separate DC vehicle charger and separate mains charger because I like having the resilience and of one of these fails I've still got, you know, I can still maintain the battery somehow or other rather than have everything in one. So I was just looking for a straight charger. These previously did not have a lithium profile, they do now. Good. That's it. This is now running. It's running at 50% so I'm getting 19.2 amps running into the, into the lithium battery here. It's been on for well over half an hour. This is a 100 amp, so you've got four 100 amp cells here to make up 12 volts. Uh, I'm running, I used this cable previously with the DCC50S, it's a 10 amp cable, then that's some, just some eight mil just running into here for an Anderson plug connection. We've got 10 mil over here running to the battery. Pretty similar to the previous exercise. Don't want to hear about how this cable's undersized. I know, I know it's not what you would probably use, but the point of this exercise is just simply to look at how this performs versus the DCC50S. Let's have a look at it. All right. Your bloody shed's in a little mess here, but anyway. Let's have a look. I've got 13.8 volts, chuffing out 23 amps. Comes down here. All I'm doing is using this to simulate the car. Comes into the DC input here out and chuffs out 19 volts at the lithium profile so it's you know it's heading up the 14 volts out over there right so let's just have a look at what this is doing so get these around the right way we've got 
13.57 at the input terminals. We've got 13.8 over here. All right. And we're generating 19.24 there. And we've got 13.5 at the output. So this is just slowly bringing this thing up. Uh, all right. Now, take note. 19.25 amps. Input voltage is... 13.57. I'll wind this back. Now, this is the point of the exercise. 13.8 is what your alternator would normally run. However, with cable loss, we'd expect that at the at the caravan, 10 metres away or 30 or so feet away, with cable loss at 20-something amps, this is going to be down around, let's just say, 12.5 volts. 12, yeah, okay, 12.5. We've lost a volt and at 1.3 volts. I'm emulating. It's worse than that. 13, no, it's still 19.26 volts, right? And what are we at here? Let's have a look. Okay, so we're across these terminals here. We've got 12.2. 12.5 going in, 12.2 at the input terminals. Still 19.2 amps out. 25.6 amps to get. So this is the buck conversion process. More current going in than going out. And this gets worse as this voltage drops because that's how this thing's supposed to work. I'll get down to 11.5 volts. Now, 11.5 volts gives us down here, so you can see 11.5 volts gives us 28 amps now it's running at, because this buck converter is now getting the voltage back up. And there we are across here, we've got 11 volts at the input. 11 volts, we're still getting 19.27 amps out. I'll go down lower. I'll go down to 10.5. Now you'll notice now that it, oh, just 10.4 will do. There you go, 10.5. We're now to 31 amps in. As the buck converter in this thing boosts it up so it gets less efficient. Let's have a look here. Okay, 10 volts. But what are we getting out? Still 19.27 amps. It has not moved. At 10 and a half volts. I'll go down to 10 volts. Let's have a look here. Across there. 9.66 volts. We're still putting out 19.2. There's me point. The point is, this works the way you expect a DC to DC charger to work. It has a buck conversion process in it where it boosts the voltage back up and it continues to maintain its rated output. That's the point. This is working properly. The DCC50S will not operate when this is below 13 volts. It will not reach its... It won't even reach 15 amps. This is putting out 20 amps um, because it, this thing is correctly converting back up. So as long as you've got more 9.5 volts here... Here's the specs, 8 to 16 volts input, you will get an output. It might not be the full output, but it works over that entire range. Now they quote that also for the DCC50S. It just doesn't do it. That was the whole point of my video. Not all the other stuff. This works properly, same arrangement, it works properly. The DCC50S will not do that unless you have massive cable at this input so you get no you can only have one volt of drop from your vehicle to here to achieve anything like it's you know 25 or 30 amps out this works properly this works properly the dcc 50s doesn't that's my point that's all just wanted to show you that i'll get on with building my dc system in the caravan thanks for watching see ya